when I was a kid. Uh, with one of my friends, we would go to the grocery store and buy some dry ice. And then we'd take that dry ice and we'd put little pieces of it in cork bottles. And we'd put a little bit of water in it. And then we'd cork the bottle and then shoot them at each other. And we just have lots of fun shooting those cork bottles. But it's interesting, I wanna relate that to our emotions. I want you to think about your emotions like a piece of dry ice in a bottle. And it goes into that bottle and it releases all the gas and pressure. But if that bottle is corked, then that pressure builds even more to the point where that shoots that cork bottle, that cork out of the bottle. What happens if we put a seal on that? That pressure will eventually build to the point where it actually blows up. And that is kind of a dangerous thing to be doing with our emotions. And so one of the things that we want to be paying attention to in this process as we're addressing our mental health is the idea of normalizing talking about our emotions. For some reason, we've kind of created a, a toxic atmosphere where talking about your emotions is weird or weak. And it's quite the opposite. And you can just ask yourself, have you ever had the courage to be vulnerable, to talk about what you're feeling? I don't know a single healthcare worker that hasn't gone through some sort of challenging thing. And there's three kinds of challenges, or we call them traumas, that we'll talk about. First is primary trauma. And primary trauma is when you've gone through something specifically yourself. It could be from your past or even as your work in the healthcare. The second one is secondary trauma. And secondary trauma is when we're experiencing things that others are going through. So we may be close to those who are talking about their experiences and relaying their experiences to us over and over again. And then the third one is compassion, fatigue, or burnout. And I know you all are overworked and you take a lot on and you care so much. And sometimes you don't have the endless wells to give. And so we need to be able to address this in a really healthy way. And the first way that we need to do this is to have the courage to break the stigma of brokenness. We're all broken. I don't care what anyone else says, but we are all broken. And so because we are all broken in some way, we need to be able to have compassion for ourselves and for others. And so I want us to to remember that being broken in some way does not make us less valuable. It makes us more relatable because the people we work with and the people we interact with are also broken and we can relate with them. We can have greater empathy for them and in turn, they can trust us because they know we've experienced similar things. And so another part of this is going to be admitting to our own need to address our mental health. That should not be 
week. <laughs> that should be the strength that we all need to be able to buoy ourselves up to work through our challenges and have that internal strength through healing. It's funny because we're in the healthcare and we're, we're so focused on people taking care of their physical health. And why do we think that our mental health is any less important? In fact, in a lot of ways, our mental health is a huge component of our physical health. When we are more mentally healthy, we are more physically healthy. And so if we aren't taking care of our mental health, what we end up doing is projecting our own traumas onto others. That might be the patients we work with, that might be our coworkers, or that might be our family members. Either way, we're just creating more trauma. And so let's have the openness to be able to feel safe to talk about our own mental health and have kindness and compassion for ourselves and others. So talking about our emotions is important. But what is more important is how we talk about our emotions and our traumas. And if we can learn to do this in a healthy way, it actually creates some significant healing. So if we just talk about how terrible and awful our traumas are, we're actually re-traumatizing ourselves. Because as we're thinking and talking about it, we're staying stuck in the same mental feedback loop. And our brain can't differentiate between reality and memory. And so what happens is that our brain starts creating the chemicals of cortisol and, and whatnot that stress our body out and it actually attacks our body. And so we're not actually getting healthier, we're getting sicker if we just talk about how terrible it was. And so if we can take the time to do that in a healthy way, that'll be important. What I suggest is get some professional help. If this is really impeding you, go get professional help. There are people that can help you walk through that and do that in a healthy way so that you can get to healing and peace and energy. The next is, let's make sure we're doing intentional reprocessing. What I mean by that is, we are often feeling stuck in the past. And we have to be careful not to let the past define our present. What happens with traumas and stresses and stuff like that is, we get to a significant level of trauma or intensity of emotion and we can't handle it so we kind of bow out we uh, desensitize ourselves we numb out in some way to, to cope with it but what happens is, is our body remembers that intensity and so when we have another experience that kind of moves in that direction our body responds as if we were in the past and so then we're just living in the past. We're not actually living in the present. So as we're reprocessing our memories and kind of working through them and talking about them, we have to remember that we're not in the past. We're actually now in the present. And we might even be in a safer place, in a safer situation to be able to talk through that. And so take the time to really talk through that. And with that should be done with kind of a focused mindfulness. And what that might mean is that as we go back to that memory, as we go back to those emotions, we feel them, but not feeling them with the intent to relive them, but feel them with the intent to allow them to penetrate us and then move on from them. We can only really move on from our emotions when we have the courage to feel them. And so that mindfulness is, as we're feeling them, we're staying in the present. We might breathe. Focus on our body. Recognize our muscles. 
and the energy that is there and purposefully relax them as we feel that emotion. Because emotions can be really hard. So staying present in the moment allows us to feel them better and to be more resilient through them. And then what we can do is kind of set a new intention for our life, what it is that we want to accomplish and who we want to be. And then think of the positive elevated emotions that we will feel when we are that way. And then stay focused and let our body feel that emotion as kind of a healing regenerative process. What we have to remember through this process is it isn't easy. And having support makes a big difference. Making sure we're talking to healthy people who aren't going to keep us stuck in our emotions. If that's a professional, get the professional help. But unresolved conflict saps our energy, just takes it right away and then makes us less capable to use that energy to help others. So take the time, be willing to talk about your emotions and let's create a culture where mental health is a priority so that you have the energy and the the strength to best address those that you care for. Please like and subscribe if this is helpful and make comments below so we can get a discussion going about how to improve this culture. I hope that helps.